Okie dokie, let's get going with the next unit. We are starting now chapter 5, unit 6. I don't know how you want to call that, but basically we're saying unit 6 because it's about to be the set for the next test. Anyways, we're going to talk about bisectors of triangles with today's lesson. Today you will identify and use perpendicular and angle bisectors of triangles. Happy joy! So what is a uh, bisector? Well, let's don't forget, bisector is something that cuts into equal halves. A perpendicular bisector is a segment or line that intersects another segment at its midpoint and is perpendicular to that. In other words, it forms a 90 degree angle. So not only would it be cutting the segment into two equal halves, it would also form a 90 degree angle when it does that. Okay, so let's look at this. Now, so there's two uh, theorems that go with this. There's the perpendicular bisector theorem, which we'll look at. And basically, that one says um, that if there is a point that is on, a bi on the perpendicular bise uh, bisector of a segment. In other words, point C here. Okay. It is equal distance from the two endpoints. So since this is a CD is a perpendicular bisector of AB, not only am I saying these two sides are congruent, I'm also saying that these two sides right here are congruent. So by saying that's a perpendicular bisector, I am now proving that those two triangles are being cut into two equal halves um, and basically become two congruent triangles. Anyways, moving on. And at the same time, we can say that if we know that these sides are congruent, then we know it is forming a perpendicular bisector. And that E, uh, yeah, that is a perpendicular bisector. That's what this converse is saying. All right, anyways, moving on. So let's look at some examples. How does this help us? Okay, just go with my drawings because my drawings are never that good. So if I give you something like this, could you find, say, side AB? Well, because... This is a perpendicular bisector, and I'm going to say do this in like a, a slightly different color. Uh, this right here, AC, is a perpendicular bisector. You can tell because one, it's from the 90 degree angle, and two, these two sides are congruent. Then that means AD and AB are the same. And if AD and AB are congruent, then we know that AB is equal to 4. Point one, because they are congruent. Okay. <clears throat> then from there, let's look at another example. Okay, so here I'm giving you that, oh, hey, look, oh, no, it's algebra again. Well, again, we know these two sides are equal because this is a perpendicular bisector, cuts it into two equal halves. So then that means these two sides are equal or congruent. So I can set them equal and do, again, my variables to the left, numbers to the right, and I can easily find x. And then if I wanted to find the length of the side, I can just plug it back in, put the x in place of the, one of the x's, and then find out what the length of the side is. So here, like if I wanted to find rt, I could say 4 times 5 minus 7, which would give me 13. All right, so next thing, let's talk about a... Concurrent lines. Concurrent lines are three or more lines that intersect at a common point. That common point is called a, that, that point of intersection that's common is called a point of concurrency. Since a triangle has three sides, it has three perpendicular bisectors, which are concurrent lines. Those, okay, apparently people just want to keep calling, so I don't know what I was saying. Oh, um, a triangle has three sides, it has three perpendicular bisectors, which are concurrent lines. The point of concurrency on a triangle is called a circumcenter. Now, every triangle has a circumcenter, um, and there is a theorem that goes with that. The perpendicular bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point that's called the circumcenter that is equal distance from the vertices of the triangle. So keep in mind that a circumcenter will be equal distance. In other words, this line, this line, and this line are all congruent segments. I guess I should be doing that with a four little hash marks. But they're all congruent. That's what that's saying right there. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean they all lie inside a triangle. Okay? In an acute triangle, uh, the circumcenters will lie inside the triangle. But in an obtuse, 
the circumcenter lies on the outside, and on a right triangle, it lies ends up lying on the hypotenuse. So just kind of keep that in mind. Circumcenters, depending on the type of triangle, they don't have to be inside the triangle. They can be at other locations. But the point is, this point will be equal distance from each of the um, each of the vertices of the triangle. They are equal distance from the vertices. All right, so how does that help us, or what does that say? Well, we'll get to some examples about that stuff in a minute. Let's also talk about angle bisectors. Angle bisectors, again, are lines, segments, or rays that divide an angle into two congruent angles. Now, the thing is, though, with an angle bisector, the distance from, say, a point, any point on the angle, to the bisector is equal distance uh, like that. So what they're saying here is that if you draw a line from a point on the bisector to points on the uh, angle, they, it will be equal distance from the angle. Okay. Um, conversely, that if a point is interior, it tells you if a point in the interior of an angle is equal distance from the sides of an angle, then is the bisector of an angle. All right, so what does that tell us? How does that work? Okay, so here's an example. And let's say I want to find x, y. Okay, so I know because this is a perpendicular bisector, notice how it cuts in its two equal halves, 41 degrees, 41 degrees, so those are, those are the same. Then x, w is 7, x, y has to also be 7. That, that's it. Now, how about this one? Well, this is the one where I use the converse. Because these two lines are equal, then that means these two angles have to be congruent. So if LKM is 37 degrees, JKL would have to be 37 degrees also. Okay, so finally, let's look at like one more example. Here they want you to find SP. Well, notice again, those two angles right there, MJS and SJP are congruent. Since they're congruent, that means those two sides are congruent. If those two sides are congruent, then I can find the x's, set them equal to each other, variables to the left, numbers to the right, and then go from there, and then you can divide, and you would find out that x is equal to 4. If x equals 4, then I can plug it into the x and say, okay, 24 minus 7 is 17, so sp must be 17. So that gives you a fairly good idea of like how to use these properties. And again, guys, that means you've got to be studying these because if you're not studying and you're not practicing, you're not going to learn this. The reason why y'all complain that this class is hard is because you're not trying to do the work. You just rather, it's easier to quit than to do. And y'all should try doing. Maybe you might surprise yourself. Anyways, uh, let's talk about an end center. An end center is, since a triangle has three angles, it has three angle bisectors. The angle bisectors are concurrent. Their point of concurrency is called an end center. So there's a circumcenter and there's an end center. The circumcenter is in reference to the point of concurrency for the three perpendicular bisectors, the sides. And the end center is the angle bisectors, the sides. Or, I'm sorry, the angle bisectors. So, and again, notice that the end centers are all equal distance from <clears throat> um, the angle bisectors. I'm sorry, equal distance from the sides of the triangle. Sorry, I, I said that wrong. Anyways, okay, so what does that mean? All right, so here's one where we have an end center. Okay, so point J there is an end center. So if I wanted to find JF, well, I know that that right there, those two sides, JF and JE, are congruent. If you look at JEA, that one right there, that triangle, that is a right triangle. And every right triangle we know has a, a the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So where I could say, okay, I can plug in the 12 and 15 and find A squared, which is 81. So that means A is 9. So that means JF is 9 because they have to be congruent. Now, let's look at another type. How about finding angle MJAC? JAC, if you would notice, is 
right over here, let me mark this out, J, A, C. So I need to find this angle right here. Well, I know those two angles right there that I'm about to do, 34 repeats, because those two angles have to be congruent, because those are angle bisectors. I also know the 32 would have to repeat. And then if I add those up, I would get that I'd have 68 and 64, and then that would tell me 132. Well, if I subtract, that means I have 48. That means this right here would be 48 degrees. Then you divide it by 2, and you would find out it's 24. So we pretty much have seen how we can practice this, and that's really about it. I'm not going to go any further because it's kind of long as it is. But anyways, thank you so much for your time. Please ask questions. Please do the work, and you might surprise yourself on how well you're doing. Thanks so much for your time. Y'all take care.